Hello, I'm Steve Coomer, and I'm the Head of Science here at Hairgrove School. Now, whilst all students study science at GCSE in years 10 and 11, you do have the option of triple award science. So I thought I'd put together this video presentation to help explain the differences between the two so you can make an informed decision. It's unfortunate that we can't do this in person, but I thought this would be the best alternative. Here's some of the things that we're going to talk about um, in the next few minutes, um, and I'll go through them one at a time. So parents, um, some of you will have had elder siblings going through the school and will be more aware of the more recent changes to GCSE, but others won't be. So I thought I'd take a minute or two just to talk about how things might have changed um, since you were at school. Uh, the first sort of big change was that um, letter grades went out and replaced by numbers. Um, instead of A star downwards, it's become a nine to one grading scale. Nine being the highest grade, which is the equivalent of almost an A double star, I'll come back to that in a second, down to a grade one. So I'm just putting this up there because I suppose a grade four what does that mean? Well, it's somewhere just around a sort of C grade. All right. Uh, grade five is somewhere between a C and a B. So that's now considered a good pass. In old money, I suppose a grade seven is the equivalent of an A. And as I said, an eight and a nine are sort of an A star and an eight double star. So what are the main differences um, between triple science and double science since maybe you were at school? Well, the first difference, or the, the main sort of difference, I suppose, is that triple award science, you study all three sciences and end up with three GCSEs. That's the difference, okay? Double award science, which may have been called combined science, um, they still study all three sciences. However, they only end up with two GCSEs. And I just want to be clear here, the vast majority of people in the country study double award uh, science. Um, and the reason why it's only sort of worth two GCSEs is there's less content. Uh, they cover a couple of extra topics per science um, in the triple award. Now, I'll go into this in a little more detail in a second, but the double award science, they take all the scores from all their three sciences and basically average that out to give them two grades. Whereas in triple award science, the scores for each science are taken separately and so they are given a separate grade for each science. And that's why the kind of combined science and separate science names come from. Now, I just want to be clear here, the confusion often comes with the fact that if you studied at school, you might have studied double science where you only had to do two GCSE, uh, two science subjects. Um, that just isn't the case. So double science, they still have to do biology, chemistry and physics. There's no option of dropping one of those subjects. Uh, one of the other key differences that I get asked about by parents is whether there's coursework or any exams taken during the two years. Um, and for both double and triple science, they are linear uh, courses. So unfortunately, all the exams are right at the end. So those performances in the summer GCSEs in year 11 um, is what counts. So I said I'd explain a little bit more about uh, the exams. Um, and I know this looks a little bit confusing, okay? But for all GCSE science students, whether they're doing double or triple award, they take a total of six papers, uh, two for each science. So I've just put you know, together um, some of the exam dates here. Unfortunately, these didn't happen last year, but you get the idea that in biology, there'd be two papers, chemistry, two, and physics. Um, the difference are the length of the exams. In double award, each science paper, so all six papers, are an hour and 10 minutes long and worth 60 marks. In triple science, each paper is an hour and 45 minutes and worth 100 marks. 
Okay, so big difference in terms of the time and the number of marks, and that's where that sort of third GCSE um, is achieved. So paper one and paper two, I've just put that at the bottom there, that is just half the content. So half of what they studied in biology will come up in paper one, the other half of what they studied over the two years will come up in paper two. All right. So there's absolutely no coursework, however, science is a practical subject so they will be doing practical experiments throughout the two years in year 10 and 11 and the way they test it um, is rather than having coursework or uh, practical exams um, it just forms a major part of the exams that they sit the written exams so there are mandatory practicals that we have to do that the students have to uh, perform during their two years so they get a really good understanding of them and the exam board make sure that these practicals come up as questions in the exam so things about planning analysis uh, evaluating how to improve experiments all those kind of things come up in their exam because they are expected to have studied it during the two years and actually carried out these practicals and we ensure that they do that so here's a sort of little summary of trying to explain how the grading works between triple science and double science. So triple science, they get three separate GCSE grades, one for each subject. So as I showed on the previous slide, they do two papers for each subject. Each in triple science would be out of 100. So their biology score would be out of 200. And let's say, I don't know, they get 100 out of 200, that might be worth a grade five. Those other two chemistry papers that they sit would be combined together to give them a score out of 200, and they get a separate grade for that one. Let's say they get 120, they might get a grade seven. All right. So at the end, after studying triple science and doing the exams, they will end up with three GCSE grades, and they are independent of each other. So the biology exams have no effect on the chemistry ones. The chemistry exams have no effect on the biology or physics. In double award science, they are still doing all three subjects, six papers. They're just shorter. They're only an hour and 10 minutes and worth 60 marks. And all three sciences, basically their marks, get added together and combined to give them a total score out of 360. So um, they add them together. Let's say it comes to 200 out of 360. That might be worth a double grade of 6.6, six, which is worth two GCSEs, one at a grade six, one, another one at a grade six. So the way it works is let's say they got 320. That might be a 9.9, nine. 300, a 9.8, 280, an 8.8, eight, and so on. It works its way down. So one of the common questions I get asked is kind of which set of grades is better? Um, and I suppose, as always, I think about, well, quality over quantity. Um, so combined science gives you two GCSEs. And because it's an average, it may hide some of your weaknesses. For example, if you're not so strong in biology, I just go back to that previous student here who didn't find biology as easy as maybe the other two, um, this might um, be boosted, that score, by how well they do in chemistry and physics when they're doing combined science, because it's an average of all their papers. Um, however, doing double award may also not highlight their strengths. For example, if they were really keen to do chemistry later on, you know, this student, if they were sitting triple award, yes, they've got a seven. Whereas if the equivalent student with sort of those abilities sat combined science, they might get a six, six. So it's one of those where sometimes quality over quantity is probably the first thing I'd say, but there are advantages and disadvantages to doing uh, combined science. I suppose the final thing I've written here is, is my worst science grade better than what I would have achieved in a different subject? So 
if you're doing double award, you're having to pick um, other options. And if triple science is one of those options, well, if I got that grade five in biology, even though I know it's my least favorite science or my least strongest science, is that still better than what I'd get doing history or geography or another subject? If it is, then actually maybe triple science is the right choice for you. So that's what I mean about quality of the grades rather than quantity. Um, another sort of common question um, I get asked, so I thought I'd answer it during this video, is um, what about the foundation and higher tiers? So the tier of entry, it doesn't matter whether you're doing double or triple award, you can sit the foundation tier for both. So for foundation tier, these are papers where the ceiling, the top mark you can get is a grade five. Um, whereas higher tier, you get the grades from four to nine. Um, if you were to get less than a four, uh, you'd get a U, you'd get an ungraded. So none of these choices about tiers, we decide until pretty much the very end of year 11, just before they're going to sit their summer exams. So we very much start teaching them all with the idea of they could do higher tier. Um, but the key difference, I suppose, is that with the double award science, when you make that final choice, what tier of entry you're going to do for your papers, in double award, all six papers must be the same tier because it's an average of all those six scores. You can't do a higher tier in one and a foundation tier in another. All six papers have to be the same tier. With triple science, because they're taken as individual GCSEs and individual subjects separate from each other, you could do different tiers for the different sciences. Um, so in physics, I could do higher tier for physics, paper one and paper two. But you know what, chemistry, I've done two years, I, I don't think I'm going to be able to get a grade six or a grade seven, and I think I've got the best chance of getting a grade five doing the foundation tier, I can do that. All right, so I can do higher tier in physics, I can do foundation tier in chemistry or, or any of the other sciences. But again, we don't make that decision until the very end of year 11. Um, Another question I get asked about is the English and sort of math skills and how that relates to it and the differences. Well, the exam papers, um, besides the length, as I said before, the triple science papers are an hour and 45 minutes and worth 100 marks. Um, the language is and sort of math skills are different, probably in the triple award as opposed to the double award. Um, the Longer answer questions uh, come up more. Um, there's a sort of greater expectation of that. Um, but really, I'm sort of highlighted here at the bottom that the main differences are between the higher and foundation tier. Um, you know, the amount of questions and just the language used to ask the questions is probably um, stronger in the higher tiers than the foundation tier. Is there much difference between the double award and triple award higher tiers? I don't think so personally, um, but there is a difference in the volume of content um, and perhaps um, slightly more complicated math skills, but that often really is to do with the content in the physics and chemistry papers. So whilst in all science, whether it's double or triple award, there is about 20% of the marks will be maths related, whether it's working out averages, uh, calculations. Um, so that is something to bear in mind. Whilst all students have to do double award and for all students, 20% of their science papers will have some maths element to it. And if they're doing triple award, there's probably more maths involved. Um, or more more difficult maths. I wouldn't say necessarily more maths, but more difficult maths. So 
if maths is a subject that you feel you really struggle with, I would pro I would avoid doing triple science. So here are some sort of common student questions. Um, I went round and asked a few of them what they what they wanted me to answer, um, and I've put them together here. So hopefully this will be useful for the students, but maybe some of the parents as well. Um, <laughs> the classic sort of question is: Is triple GCSE, triple science GCSE harder um, and and more work? Um, my response to that is often: Well, you know, are you a problem solver? Um, triple science um, you have to apply your knowledge to new situations to new questions that you haven't necessarily seen before so if you want to sort of if you like learning your facts and repeating those facts in the same way that you've uh, learned them and you've come across before then double award science is much closer to that triple award science is much more well i've learned this fact but now about acids um, and now this question is about phosphoric acid um, some students will say sir you haven't taught us about phosphoric acid and i would say well hold on a minute you know about acids in general so what you've learned about acids this question is just asking you to use that knowledge to answer the question so in triple science, there's much more problem solving using information that you've learned before. So that's the sort of best way I can describe about whether you find it harder or more work. Now, personally, actually, I think that means less work because you've learned the facts. You're now just applying it to new situations. Um, I also would say that, yes, while triple science, you've got these extra topics you've got these extra long exams you will have three more lessons a week because it's an option subject so everybody whether they're doing double award science will have five lessons a week uh, but triple award science would have up to eight lessons a week so that's a lot of science lessons so you've got to enjoy your science all right because if you're doing triple award it's going to take up a lot of your time but but it's three gcses so that's why it's taking up Pretty much a third of your week. Um, so I suppose you can compare it to well if I'm doing double award I enjoy science um, I think it's my best subject my strongest subject you know my weakest sort of grade probably better than what I'd get in one of the other options um, well actually because it's science and you're sort of applying these concepts it might actually be less work than learning a completely separate subject from scratch like history I don't, I don't know i'm using history a lot i don't mean to pick on history but um, whereas the triple content is just a bit more science you can see links to some of the earlier topics that you've studied before so maybe you're not starting from completely from scratch again again this is something to to bear in mind if you enjoy science um, that might be better for you um, but I suppose there, the last thing I'd put in is sort of, you know, your English and math skills can influence students' thoughts on whether they find it harder. So, you know, if you really don't like maths and you're doing triple science, there's quite a lot of maths questions, you know, you, you might not enjoy it and you might find it hard. Um, if you're, you know, reading and um, understanding, you know, isn't, isn't, you might find that difficult with the questions. Um, and so I, I just link that into it. Um, I would say math skills are probably more important than the than the English skills for doing triple award science and that that near link. Uh, another common question: um, If I want to do A level science, do I have to do uh, triple science at GCSE? Um, and the answer is no. Um, as I said, most people in the country do double award, um, and you know, if you, as long as you get good grades, and that's what I mean about the quality over the quantity, doing two GCSEs might mean with the averages that you get a higher two grades overall um, so don't don't worry if you haven't decided what you want to do at a level um, if you do double award you can carry on and do uh, sciences later on um, should i take a triple science gcc if i want a career i've sort of emphasized uh, sort of talked about it talked about it in my earlier answer 
Um, no, you can go on to do A-levels in the sciences that you want to do and then go on to do um, sciences at university or a degree or a, um, apprenticeship. So, no, um, I just sort of put in here that some universities say they prefer um, triple science, but that is a minority. And to be honest with you, I personally think that's outdated from my experience. Um, they're going to base the vast majority on the A-levels and, and what you do if you want to go to university. Um, I don't want to be a scientist. Is it worth doing triple science? Um, well, it just goes back to um, that thing about, well, you know what, doing a third GCSE, um, would you get a better grade than doing a different subject? Um, if you enjoy science, um, that's the ones you're going to be passionate about and work hard at. So those are going to be the subjects that you naturally do better in. Um, so you don't necessarily have to want to go to be a scientist to do triple science. But just think if it's your best subject, you're going to get the best grades. That's going to set you up in later life. Um, employers like science because it's a bit of a practical subject, but also it's problem solving. Um, so they do they do like it on uh, CVs and applications. Um, but whether that's double or triple award, it's the quality of grade that counts. Um, I've put a poster in the next sort of slide about some of the careers and, and things that uh, people often don't think about that link to science. Um, and you can pause the video and have a look at that if, if you like. Um, isn't triple science just for the clever students? Um, look, if, if you enjoy it, consider it. Um, as I said here, everyone does their best in the subjects they enjoy. Um, what I would say is that uh, depending on the number of students, we often can't set our uh, triple science classes into higher or foundation sets. As I said, we, we leave that decision right to the end of year 11. Uh, we don't want to stop anybody. We don't want to say, look, your foundation in year 10 and then actually you know, we haven't covered the content that they need to do the higher tier later on. We'd rather keep it open to everybody. Um, so there are mixed ability sets, if you like, because we haven't labelled foundation or higher tiers at this stage. Um, so obviously there might be a range of students who are targeting different grades. Some students might be aiming for seven, eights, nines. Others, they're doing it because they enjoy it. It's their best subjects and they're looking at grades, you know, fours, fives, etc. So um, no, it's not just for the clever students. It's, you've got to think about yourself. So here's here's some of the posters and things that I that I put up um, for where sort of these sciences, whether it's double award or triple award, can take you. I just thought that'd be useful, which you can pause and have a look at. Um, so hopefully I've answered some of the main sort of questions and explain the key differences between double award and triple award. Um, and I suppose this question is, what should I do if I'm still not sure? Well, it, it, it's natural not to be sure. Um, at this stage in year nine, we often don't know what career we're going to go into. Um, so I suppose what I'd say is speak to your science teachers. Um, they know the students, uh, they know the demands of the course, and they'll be open and honest with you about whether they think um, you as a student are suitable. You could speak to some older siblings if you have any um, who are taking triple science. Um, you might be able to come and speak to the current year 11s. Uh, the year 11s are a fantastic year group. They'd be more than happy to uh, speak to you um, about their thoughts, how they feel, um, and that might influence you and help make up your mind. Obviously, uh, Students talk it through with your parents, come up with some clear questions, um, and that can be asked at parents' evening. Um, if you don't want to speak to the teachers directly, your parents can, um, but it's good to come up with a sort of list of questions. Um, at the moment, I'm sure parents' evening is probably looking uh, online or remotely, but that's another avenue that you can speak to your uh, teachers about. And I suppose the last point is, look, do what you enjoy or what you think you're best at. At GCSE, leave all options open for your future career. Um, you may not necessarily know what subject you want to do later on. So you know what, do what you enjoy, do what you think you're best at at the moment. Don't follow your friends um, or maybe because you uh, like that teacher, you know, think about yourself, think about what you enjoy and what you're best at. 
Um, thank you for taking the time to uh, watch this video. Uh, I hope it was helpful. Um, a lot of information to take in. Uh, that's why this video, I think, will be on the website uh, where you can pause it. Um, and I hope the notes in the background to me talking uh, are clear and concise. Um, but if you have any questions or you're not sure, um, I've just put a few dates up here for you. So um, as far as I'm aware, <laughs> as things stand at the moment, um, we've got the options evening. This will be going out on the 11th of January, this video, um, because unfortunately it can't happen at the moment uh, in person. And you should be receiving an options information booklet um, that will go through the choices, the subjects you have to pick, etc. Um, and I suppose you've then got a few weeks uh, before parents' evening, which is likely to be online. Um, but obviously you can contact your tutor or your head of year or myself. As I said, I'm Steve Coomer, I'm the head of science, and that's why I've put the school sort of website. If you go onto the contact us, you can contact via reception. Uh, you can ask, uh, leave a message there and ask uh, someone to call you back. Uh, I'm very happy to answer uh, any questions if students are thinking about uh, doing triple award. Um, so I suppose that just leaves me to say thank you very much for uh, listening. Um, I hope this was helpful and um, just uh, wishing you um, all the best in the decision and uh, that you'll stay safe during this difficult time. Thank you very much. Goodbye.